to another episode of Keep Trucha, where we showcase Latin influencers and creators. Uh, my, my name is Christian, and my partner Abel is on production. And tonight we have another special guest, uh, Luis Garcia, all the way from South Central California. Uh, Luis, go ahead and give us a little bio. Saludos. Uh, my name is Luis Senado Garcia. I'm uh, an art educator from Los Angeles. And um, I've been teaching for 14 years. Uh, I'm also an artist. Uh, I recently received my doctorate in education two years ago. Um, and so, you know, I, I, the work that I do here in Los Angeles as an art educator is really develop um, a social justice focused curriculum for communities of color. Uh, and this is something that I've done with my high school students in response to, you know, the social dynamics that they live in. Uh, to understand the, the marginalized communities that they live in and, and to also develop uh, agency in making changes to those, to those circumstances that they find themselves in. Um, and, and one of the things that I try to do, you know, we understand that there's a, a scarcity of art education in communities of color. And so what I try to do is, you know, understanding that I do not have a, a great, uh, healthy budget for an arts education. I, what I do is I bring in critical education so that I can use it within art education so that an underfunded art education, right? Gives them the most benefits by developing their social consciousness. Um, so that's really the work that I've been doing for 14 years. Um, and so, uh, hope to enjoy this. Uh, you, you guys, everyone that's watching this, to enjoy this interview. Definitely, definitely, and we appreciate your time. Um, I want to start from the beginning because I think there's a lot that you covered in what you just said, and it's very important. I want to make sure to get it right. What sparked your interest to even get into teaching to begin with? Uh, I, I think you know it, it was a collective of experiences. Um, Growing up in South Central uh, with a single mom, the eldest, right, uh, uh, of my family, of one brother and two sisters, you know, and it's just, I think, as an artist, you know, as a potential artist in high school, uh, I, I didn't receive an adequate art education. Um, you know, my, my experience of an art education in high school was one art class when I was in uh, the 11th grade. And because the A through G requirements only require one year of art uh, for college eligibility, um, you know, I wasn't given any other opportunity. And so uh, I had a hard time uh, trying to get into art schools. Uh, I had a hard time just developing as an artist. And it wasn't until I went to the community college and, and built a relationship there with a great mentor that, you know, I was e really able to develop myself as an artist. And so, you know, majoring in art was also a conflict for me because I thought, well, how can I make a steady income, right? And so I decided to teach art, but at the same time, I said, I want to be the teacher that I never got when I was in high school. And so I look um, for, for students that are interested in art uh, and I try to give them uh, a four-year experience of art education. That way they can build their own portfolios and then make the decision, okay, can I apply to art school um, and, and, you know, hopefully get in because now they have a portfolio and something I wasn't able to build when I was in high school. Orale. Hey, man, and, and it's, I think it's very important to, like you said, you lacked it when you were growing up and that kind of propelled you to kind of put yourself in a posi position to help people like yourself you know, who, are, who are coming up next. And so, I mean, obviously, you know, being a teacher is pretty pretty much like a, a big debate, especially on the national platform on, on many different levels. But I know one of the biggest things, I know you were just recently marching down in, in California um, in the Teachers March. Right. And I, I know just a little bit about it. I know that there's like a lack of supplies. In some cases, the classrooms are overfilled and just under budgeting overall. So in your eyes, you've been doing it for a while. 
what do you think is the best solution or the best, like, I guess, one step forward towards a solution? Uh, I, I think, well, one of the bigger conflicts in, in, in the district, right, is that we're losing state funding that's, that's um, supposed to be for public schools, right? And we're losing a lot of that funding to charter schools. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it was about 600 million, if, if, if I'm not mistaken, 600 million uh, is the amount of money that we lose, that public schools lose to charter schools. Wow. I, and charter schools, uh, from my understanding, have the liberty to say we don't want to serve students with special needs. We don't want to serve uh, students um, that have a track record of, you know, having uh, issues, right, with, with uh, behavior issues, right? Uh, and, and so, you know, that's one of the larger issues, right? And so, yeah, we're losing funding to charter schools while at the same time, right, I'll give you an example. In my case, I have four classes where I have more than 40 students mm -hmm. in each class, right? And, and then the other ones are between 30 and 38. Um, so, you know, we've been dealing with this for such a long time. Um, and so, you know, one of the solutions was that In, in terms of the strike, one of the solutions was coming to an agreement with the district, right, that they weren't going to allow that many charter schools in the district, mm. right, that, that would save uh, more money for the public schools. Uh, secondly, we wanted to get paid more, right? Teachers wanted to get paid more, but then the district said, you know what, if we pay you, then we won't have funding to hire more teachers to lower class, class sizes, right? And in a nutshell, uh, that that's something that you know our our teachers union negotiated and said you know what fine our priority is to lower class sizes to improve the learning conditions and the and and, and the environments of our students mm -hmm. right and and we are going to be much less stressed when we have 36 to 38 students right compared to what I just mentioned 42 43 44. Um, and in some cases, PE teachers have between 50 and 60. Um, and so the agreement, I think, comes is that there really needs to be an investment, uh, um, an authentic investment, right, in, in public schooling because, you know, we need to hire more teachers, right, and lower class sizes. And that's really going to uh, create a, a better learning environment for everyone. Uh, I mean, there's a lot more to unpack, right? But I'm just trying to keep it at a minimum. Yeah, yeah, no, no. And that, that makes complete sense. Um, and, and I think for a teacher just in, in general, the the, per, or the idea of kind of relating to your students and kind of getting on common ground with your students is always kind of, at least for, I don't want to say a good teacher, but at least for an effective teacher, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. it, in terms of art, I know for myself when I see art, I, I tend to kind of lean more towards cultural art and stuff that I can relate to. And so for you, what is that process like as far as relating to your students and how much do you think the art that you do affects like, you know, youth, like people right. like yourself growing up? Um, so, I mean, one of the things that I try to do as, as an educator, right, when I first started teaching is, is really being that uh, giving my students that experience that I never had, right? Uh, I think, you know, I'm a big uh, critic of, of banking education, right? And, and banking education, I'll give you a perfect example, is, is those classes that you go to and the teacher's like, okay, you guys need to answer these 10 questions that are on the board. Read pages 10 through 30 and you'll find the answers there. And really that's, that's, that's banking education because all you're doing is getting information, saving it, and using it when you need to take a test. And there's no engagement, there's no dialogue, there's no, uh, you know, giving students a voice or developing their sense of, of agency or developing their independence. 
right? And so what I try to do as an art educator is, you know, I'll teach them perspective drawing, but then I say, okay, look, let's look at these streets in your neighborhood between 41st and 42nd, right? This is one of the main streets in the neighborhood, and I show them how to do perspective drawing. And, and the assignment that I give them is, okay, you're, you're going to be a developer, right, that's submitting a proposal to change the stores in this street, right? Let's analyze what stores are here. Do we need this wheat shop on the corner? And how does that benefit the community? Right. right? And so they start analyzing things like that. And do we re need a rim shop? right in the corner or what are we missing that's making us go to other communities and so we have things like gyms right or um they talk about having movie theaters in the community right because they're you know we're we're in a community where there's a lot of um uh businesses that aren't necessarily benefiting the community and so for entertainment or for leisure, they have to go somewhere else. Uh, and so that's one thing, for example, is that if I'm going to teach them perspective drawing, it's going to be, it's going to be through the knowledge that they know about their community. And I'm gonna use their knowledge of the community to, for them to develop an awareness of, like I said, do we really need this wheat shop, right? right? How does that benefit communities, right? Why can't we have maybe a daycare? or a, a gym, right, to promote healthy living. So the other thing they need to think about is in 10 years from now, what will that business be doing for the community? Mm. And so it, it's sort of things like that where, where I have them develop agency, right, even if it's through an assignment. Yeah, and, and I, I think more so also like the, as far as what you're saying, like you're also kind of developing a mindset and, and, and almost – innovation and kind of like challenging them to kind of look at things differently and and how you can possibly you know better serve your community which i think is is you know great um to kind of take a step away from teaching a little bit not too much but like you said you mentioned you know you, you're one of your main um not hobbies of passions growing up with art so as far as art is concerned what has that kind of done to create that spark for you like what have you found in art that you don't really find anywhere else um, like I, I think I'm coming from a very unique position, right? Uh, uh, I'm coming from the position and, and the experience of being an artist, uh, of being a student from the community and from the high school that I teach in right now, right? And so I have that perspective of, of, a, of a student that grew up, right, in this in this community in, in the community and and was a product of, of the same school. Um, and, and aside from that, right, I have the privilege of being an educator. So I have these perspectives, right? And I have all these perspectives that understand how perhaps a student may respond to my, my teaching approaches. Mm -hmm. uh, and so again, right, to me is I'm in a classroom uh, full of students whose, whose shoes I once was in. Right, and, and so that's really what sparks my passion, right? Um, and and you know, and, and I don't stop inside the classroom, right? And, and this is why I develop opportunities for students and myself to change our communities. And so we've done murals, right? We've done demonstrations. Um, and so to me, you know, what continues to spark me is seeing how students are using what they learn in the classroom and use it, right, um, to change their communities, yeah. right? And, and so at, at one point or another, you know, I always tell my students, you know what, it's cool, like, that we're doing this together, but at one point, I'm going to be gone, yeah. and, and, and what are you going to be left with, right? And you're going to be left with the responsibility of replacing or, or even developing yourself to be that individual that, that's going to... to take initiative, right, to, to be the next generation of activists in the community. Yeah, and and your work, the, the work that you actually do, like your artwork, um, I don't know if you can see behind me, I have uh, the one that I got from you, um, and, and the idea behind it, you know, it, it's a little girl, she's wearing her lucha mask and she's carrying her books, right. and 
the concept to me is, and the reason why I got it was it's, it's such a powerful statement in the sense of like what you're saying, you know, in, in a community where all you see is, is, you know, it might be a lot of negative stuff, but when you can kind of find that hope or that drive, and especially when you have teachers like yourself that kind of help guide you, you know, in the right direction, you can turn that negativity around you in, into fuel. And so your artwork, um, how do you think your artwork affects, you know, kids like, like that piece? If a young girl were to see it, that might, you know, affect her in a certain way. Is that like kind of what you intend when you do when you do your work? Um, not not necessarily. I mean, uh, I do talk to my students about the work that I'm currently working on. Right. Um, when when I finished that piece. Um, I was working on it with my uh, advanced placement students. Okay. I, I take the time to show them how I approach art, right? My own techniques, um, how I put my concepts and ideas together. And, and yeah, that influences them to develop their own, right? I always tell them, right? You can like someone's work and, and, and look at it and admire it and, and, and ask them all the questions you want, but don't ever copy them, right? Just take ideas uh, and, and develop your own work. Um, so, I mean, they, they understand that, you know, my own artwork is founded on really my experience as an educator. Um, and, and so that particular piece that you're talking about is, is called Luchando con Libros, right? Because what you see in the background is this tagged up wall that's been painted and re, re sprayed over, o, over and over again. And, and these gangs crossing each other out. And to me, right, the people in my community, um, from, from the mom that's taking her kids to school to mm -hmm. the person that's waiting on the, sitting on the bus, uh, on the bench, waiting for the bus, to the lady that's pushing a tamale cart, those to me are all luchadores, right? Whatever way, whatever people in the community that I see, ever since I was in high school, I've always seen them as luchadores. Right. So if you remove that mask, they look like anyone in our community. But when that mask goes on, they're really the luchadores that are fighting against the, the social inequality that exists in our communities. And so Luchando con Libros symbolizes a student that's using her books to overcome that adversity, to overcome that, you know, social climate that that's, uh, you know, that, that doesn't provide the best resources in our communities. Um, and so students understand that I'm coming with my art, I'm coming from so many different directions. Um, and, and for that particular reason, right, it, it makes it uh, very unique in some instances. Yeah, and, and as far as your students, if there's one thing that you could, you know, right have them leave your your classroom with whether it's like a state of mind or, or a certain attribute what do you think that would be i i want them to leave with the agency to to create the change they never uh experienced right in their community right so if if i was only able to push them this far then they should become the agent you know they should they should um take the on the responsibility of saying okay this is what I want to push my community towards, right? Um, and so, honestly, you know, one of the things that I've always told my students is that if you want to get out of this community because it's not really all that great, that's fine if you get out of it, but invest your time in it, right? And so you might be able to move on to a safer community um, or whatever you want to call it, but always come back and reinvest your time and change the community, develop it, right? And and because change really happens, right, in the community. Not, I mean, politics have a big part to do with that, but uh, that's a complete different story. Uh, but I think it's it's the unification it, within the community that really, you know, it is it says it sets that foundation and, and it sets up that culture uh, to the idea that it takes a village. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. And um, as far as you know, your your personal goals and aspirations, as far as two thousand nineteen goes, what do you have planned for the rest of the year? Um, anything coming up? 
Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm in my 14th year teaching, and uh, I think, you know, that, that I'm getting to that age where my patience is just uh, getting, you know, shorter and shorter. Uh, and so I think that the next move for me is, is especially because I invested so much time and money in, in re getting my doctorate, is making the next move to to become a professor at uh, somewhere here in California at one of uh, one of the schools that offers art education. So that's my next move. But you know, at the same time, I also uh, think about is that I've been a high school teacher for 14 years, and I need to move on to the next phase, which is now I'm going to prepare art educators. Mm to be those teachers, right? Coming in with a critical lens in art education that, that are gonna focus on teaching the next generation of students in marginalized communities. Awesome, man, and, and we look forward to it. I mean, as far as, you know, all that you've done, and I know teachers don't typically get a lot of credit or maybe not as much as they deserve, but, you know, we really appreciate all that you do um, if there's anything that we can do to help out, anything that, you know, we can share or at least uh, if there's any um, other marches, anything like that, please let us know. But um, that, I believe that's all the questions I have, man. Again, thank you for your time and, and everything that you do. All right, guys. Thank you guys again for tuning into this episode. A lot was covered in this one. So please, if you heard anything you liked, uh, like, comment, subscribe, share, anything you can do to support. We really appreciate it. And it helps us grow and get more people on the episodes. Um, this is a weekly uh, series, so please, please um, keep checking us out every Tuesday at 6 p.m. And we also just have some new gear that just dropped. Um, you can find that at www.lapromterasupply.com. And again, this is every Tuesday at 6 p.m., so be sure to check us out next week. Thank you.